What is the secret behind having different railway gauges throughout the world? Are there political, technical or some other reasons? Let's discover this. First, let's define what railway gauge is. This term refers to different things, so we have track gauge, loading gauge and structure or clearance gauge. Track gauge is distance between two rails on the track. Loading gauge is two-dimensional layout inside which need to fit all rail vehicles including loads as well. And clearance gauge is also two-dimensional layout outside which need to be all equipment alongside railways, platforms, etc. Here we are talking about track gauge. More on the definition of track gauge, it is more precisely distance between two rails on the track measured from inside of each rail 14 millimeters below rail top. Today we have more than 10 different track gauges in the world. We divide them in three different groups. Narrow track gauge, standard track gauge and broad track gauge. You can probably assume what is the main problem with this. It is incompatibility between the systems. In other words, you cannot use your rail cars and locomotives on two different track gauges efficiently. There are some solutions, but they are usually time-taking. Let's start with standard railway gauge, which is mostly used throughout the world. This is actually today industry standard and all new railways are built 1435mm track gauge. Countries that have this track gauge are most of the countries in Europe, China, Australia, South Korea, Japan, some countries in South America and Africa. And please note that some countries have multiple track gauges, such as Sweden, where we have standard track gauge, but also narrow track gauge. Same situation is with Japan and some other countries. 1435 comes from 19th century, actually, back in the railway beginnings. There are a few different stories why 1435, such as that the first railways in mining factories were 1435, that the distance between two horse carriage wheels was 1435, but the most realistic is that first locomotives designed by George Stevenson in Great Britain in 19th century used 1422 millimeters, but later, what, later on it was expanded to 1435. There was a lot of problems with deciding which track gauge will become standard in Great Britain and this term it has its name and it's called track gauge battle. Narrow gauge railway is gauge that is below 1435 and there are many different types. They're dominant in Africa and South America but also exist in other parts of the world as mentioned before. There are also some beautiful heritage railways in Serbia that use narrow gauge tracks. Narrow gauge railways are not used in new railway projects today because they are not very efficient. Broad gauge railways are all railways with track gauge wider than 1435. They are used in not that many countries, but it is interesting that they are used in whole Russia with width of 15-20 mm. Besides this, there are some other countries that have wide track gauge such as Finland, Estonia, Mongolia, former Soviet republics, parts of Spain and Portugal, India and few more. So we came to the part, to the main part, and that is why so many different track gauges in the world. There are three different main reasons, technical, political and economical. Technical reasons behind narrow gauge railways are lack of space, mountainous areas, for example, low freight transport loads, needs, etc. However, main downsides are bad track stability, limited freight loads and low speed. Technical reasons behind broad track gauge are completely opposite to narrow gauge railways, such as greater track stability, high freight loads capacity and higher speeds. On the other side, they require much more space, materials, objects, etc. And 1435 track gauge seems like acceptable solution to many countries and it is a part of European interoperability policy with the plan to have compatible track gauges between all countries. 
Political reasons are quite interesting. This mainly considers Russia and Europe where different track gauges are mainly built so that during the war and invasion countries cannot use railways as a mean of transport for military needs. It makes a lot of sense since in 19th and 20th part of the 20th century railways were used largely for military transport. However, it can be a good strategic advantage today as well, but in the world where peace is the only option, this makes technical difficulties only. Last are economical reasons, and it is very obvious. Narrow gauge railways are cheaper to build, but return on investment is lower as well, depending on purpose of the course. On the other side, broad railway gauges are expensive to build, but they have higher benefits compared to narrow gauge railway. Now, standard railway gauge is something that many countries strive for and they are shown as a good solution in technical, political and economical aspects and that's what's probably the best solution. I just want to mention that there are some other solutions to interchange between different gauge tracks such as changing boogies, transshipments, piggyback technology solution or even dual truck gauge. But is this all time taking and really looks like temporary solution? Maybe some other railway systems are solutions such as maglev trains or a hyperloop solution. Who knows, I will leave that to you to decide. High interoperability is definitely a good approach but it's kinda slow. If you feel like this is interesting to you and would like to know more, I invite you to check my railway track design course and learn one completely new industry. It takes just a few weeks, but you get ready to use very specialized knowledge. There is the link below, so make sure to check it. And of course, in the meanwhile, please like my video, leave some comments or your thoughts below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you. Thank you.